Amen. Today is the sixth Sunday and last Sunday of the great land. And today the gospel is from John chapter 9, the story of the man born blind. And the gospel of today is a gospel about blindness, spiritual blindness, that is. We all have eyes, but just because we have eyes, that does not mean that we can see. We all have ears, but that does not mean that we are all listening. That is why the Lord told his disciples, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Many people believe that if they see miracles, they would be better Christians. But that's not true. The Jews had just seen an amazing, fantastic miracle. And they heard the amazing teaching of the Lord, but they re still refused to accept his message. The Pharisees said in the gospel today, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. They said, give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. This is spiritual blindness. Spiritual blindness is not being able to see the work of God in our life. And today I want to discuss with you three causes of spiritual blindness. The first cause of spiritual blindness that we can see in the gospel of today is tradition. The Pharisees, they did not believe in the Lord because of their tradition. Their understanding of tradition, their application of tradition was the cause of their blindness. In the gospel of the Vespers last night, we read a passage that said, our, where our Lord was saying, strive to enter by the narrow gate. For I say to you, many will seek to enter and not be able when once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he will answer and say to you, I do not know you, where you are from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and we drank in your presence and, and, and we taught in, in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you where you are from, depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. How could someone believe they had a relationship with the Lord, but they didn't, and they were cast out? It's because they were following a tradition. They said, we ate in your presence. We taught in, in the streets. In other words, we attend the liturgy. We are the Sunday school servants. And tradition is very important, but, and without tradition, we would be lost. But tradition in itself cannot save. Tradition in itself cannot save. And the problem is sometimes we value tradition and traditions of men more than the traditions of God. Our Lord said to the Pharisees, for laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the traditions of men, the washing of pitchers and of cups and many other such things you do. All too well, you reject the commandment of God that you keep your tradition. And the problem actually isn't only with the tradition of man, which we have plenty actually. We have plenty of that. The, prob the problem is also with the tradition that God has given us. Because the problem of the Pharisees was the Sabbath, and the Sabbath was given by God, but it was corrupted by some traditions of men. And when the disciples were plucking grains to eat the Sabbath, the Pharisees were upset because this contradicted their understanding of the Sabbath. So our Lord said, if you had known what this means, I desire in mercy and for sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. This is the blindness that tradition can cause. And I will be sharing a few examples of this tradition that we have. And I was debating all morning, should I say or should I not say? Because as we see in the gospel, people love their traditions. <laughs> And if you speak against their traditions, people might get a little offended. I want to reassure you, my purpose is not to, to offend. The purpose of today is to enlighten, to see clearly. And in the matins this morning, 
the Lord gave the Pharisees many examples of how the Pharisees were keeping the tradition, but not doing what really, like, not doing what God really wants. And he called them many times in the Matins Gospel today, you are blind guides. You're blind guides because you keep doing a tradition, but you don't understand why you're doing this tradition. Tradition because causes blindness when the tradition becomes the goal in itself. When it becomes the goal in itself. Our Lord said, the Sabbath was not made for man, but man was made for... And wait, no, the Sabbath, sorry. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So let's talk about some examples. In the liturgies of Great Lent, there is an example, like there is a practice, there is a tradition to do. Matanyas. Yes. And this hit me one day when we were doing the matanyas in the liturgy. And you know when you do the matanya, when you do the matanya, there's like a special way to do the matanya. When you do the matanya, you don't just go... Uh, 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 uh. You're supposed to like fall to the ground fast. Fall to the ground fast. And you kiss the ground and you get up fast. And I felt like when we were doing the liturgy and we we're clean me and talking about clean me and talking and we're falling and getting up, kid. And I felt like what am I doing? The matanya da is a symbol of repentance. It is repentance. And when I fall to the ground, it's a symbol of how I fall to the ground to ask for forgiveness before God. And I was thinking to myself. Do I fall down before others? Am I willing to fall down so quickly before others? And then the rising up is to say, I'm done with this. I'm done with this sin. It's a very deep spiritual practice. But, or do we just come to the church and we just do a bunch of matanyas and and then we come to Great Lent and then we do the marathon of matanyas, and we do 400 matanyas in one day, and then we do 400 matanyas in one day, and then 364 days of the other, we don't do any matanyas, we don't offer any repentance. So then this tradition, the tradition of the matanya is to offer repentance. But if it just becomes an act, a body exercise, then you could go do burpees or you could do push-ups or you could do a lot of other things to do your exercise. The matanya da is a great spiritual practice. And when the tradition just becomes on Good Friday, we're going to come and just do a bunch of matanyas and we don't do it like matanyas throughout the year, then it loses its meaning if we don't do it with repentance. Another danger is sometimes our tradition actually negates the commandments of God. Yani, masalan, we have a tradition that we need to come right before the Bible to take communion. I'm sure of the tradition that came from. And while I understand this is, there are circumstances that make us to be late occasionally, we have become, as an Egyptian people, traditionally late. We've become traditionally late. And this is like a sad reality. And this traditionally late goes against the tradition of the church. Yani, the prayers of the church say, From the night season my, sir, my soul wakes early unto you, O my God, for your precepts are light upon the earth. The psalm says, In the morning you shall hear my voice. And in the early morning, in the early morning, in the early morning, I shall stand before you and you will look upon me. The church wants to teach us to love worship, not to like slip through the cracks and we determine, oh, and I had the last kilma of the Bible, so then I'm good to take it. That makes the tradition, <laughs> the tradition we establish actually negates the tradition of the church. Another example of this is that when I was a young deacon, I saw many deacons fighting about the rights of the church, fighting about the rights and the traditions. And one time I was in high school, I was actually concerned that perhaps uh, 
Mina remembers this. There was a Zepha in the church, and we were doing the Zepha in the church, and the deacon who was leading the Zepha, it was probably Mina, he like didn't count properly, and so he, instead of coming down the middle at the end, he, he can name, deacons can name, and we just kept going around. And then one uncle in the back of the church just lost it. Lost it. When I just like, and I was in high school, and I remember looking at this being like, huh? This is the traditions. Now you want to be, have zeal for the tradition, but you broke every other commandment of God. In your zeal to uphold tradition, you broke every tradition of God. That's why I love the story of St. Moses. When the same, some visitors came to visit St. Moses, and they were tired from their journey. And they had a, a rule at that time that they should be fasting. And so they saw the pillar of smoke coming out of St. Moses' cell, and they realized St. Moses is cooking in the time they should be fasting. And so the people got very upset and they went to like inquire, what are you doing, St. Moses? You're breaking our law. And then one after they like meditated and they heard the story, the end of the story, it says, Oh, Ava Moses, you did not keep the commandments of man, but it was so that you could keep the commandments of God. And so Moses, St. Moses, he broke the fast, but in order to, to show love. And this is, Yanni, you know, maybe the way we can bring this into our like, world is that many times I've seen many fights about prayer. And people, you can it, I say how to pray. Ya Rabbi. And we fight. No. And then we're going to read this. No, we're going to read this. Oh, we're going to pray this. Oh, we're going to do this. And even like in the house, oh, the kid doesn't want to pray with me. And then instead of a time that's supposed to be about coming together, now the prayer time and the Bible reading time has now become arguments and destruction and uh, uh, hatred and I hate this. Why are you making me do this? Why are you doing this? Ida. And then we, that's something that is supposed to be so good, we've corrupted. It was for this reason that the Lord called the Pharisees hypocrites, because they would uphold a part of the tradition and then break all the others. And that's why the Lord said, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is, is far from me. These people honor me with their traditions, but their heart is far from me. And one, another example of this, very frequently people come before communion and they will whisper in my ear, Abuna, I drank water, or I took medicine, or Musharfi, I did something at 1 a.m. before communion. Can I take communion? And because we understand quite well that you need to fast, from midnight, you need to fast nine hours to be able to take communion. And breaking the fast disqualifies anyone from taking communion. Good job. This is true. This is, a, this is a tradition. And this is a right tradition. But you know what also disqualifies someone from taking communion? Sin. Sin. Sin disqualifies someone from taking communion. But... So my question is, why do we feel the need to confess that I drank water at 1 a.m.? Like, which one disqualifies more? Drinking water at 1 a.m. or living a life of sin? And how come we don't repent from the life of sin, but we always repent of drinking water? I mean, it's good. Confess all you, you drink water, drink water, do what you want. But more important that you confess sin. You know, if someone came into the altar with their shoes on, that would be scandalous. God forbid. But we often come into the altar with a lot more baggage than our shoes. Yeah? This is the blindness that can result from, from tradition. If we blindly follow the tradition without self-reflection, 
then it loses its meaning. Tradition is a means, it is not an end. If it becomes the end, I'm sorry to say, we have become blind like the Pharisees. Another source of blindness is through social conformity. Social conformity. This point was inspired by the parents of today. I hate these parents, no offense. You know, the parents testified that this blind man was their son. But then they pushed all the questioning to their son. Why? Because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was the Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask, ask him. And sometimes we are like the parents of this blind man. We know the truth. We know what we should be doing. We know that this is our son. But because of peer pressure, because we want to conform, we deny truth, and we conform, and we conform, and we dress like the world, and we watch what the world watches, and we listen to what the world listens to. And in the end, the Christian is no different than anybody else in the world. And if this is true, if the Christian is not distinguishable from anything else in the world, we could say that the Christian is blind. We could say the Christian is blind. And conformity threatens in the same way. The Bible says that if the parents testified to the truth, they would be put out of the, the synagogue. The threat of not conforming to the group or not conforming to the world is that the world will put you, put you out. You will feel isolated. And no one wants to feel isolated. We want to conform. So that's why our young people struggle so much, because they want to fit in with the environment in the schools. But the Lord told us that we will not fit in. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of, out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Christians were not meant to fit in. They were meant to stand out. That's why St. Paul said, do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The message for youth and parents is not to let social pressure, peer pressure, affect your decisions. To affect your decisions. Like other people might gossip, but you don't have to gossip. Because gossip is a sign of blindness. It's a sign of blindness. Gossip blinds us to the goodness of others. Do not conform to the practices of other people for fitting in. Another threat of conformity is indoctrination. Indoctrination. Part of being of the group is that you have to believe a certain set of beliefs. The parents were, not, were willing to deny truth. They were willing to believe a lie so that they could be part of a group. And this is one of the problems of society today. Society today is being directed by influencers. And these influencers get paid lots of money to influence. They influence you to buy certain things, to dress a certain way, to believe certain things. And the, the sad part of society is that society loves these influencers so much that we have outsourced our thinking to them. So whatever the influencers think, I think. You know, I'm so shocked. The blindness of the peop the, these parents is that they just followed the beliefs of these Pharisees and denied all the truth that was happening in front of them. Don't believe the things that the world is teaching us. St. Paul said it this way, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. The true Christian is not blinded by conformity. The true Christian is not blinded by conformity. The third cause of blindness, and this is the most obvious one, is sin. Sin. And one of the biggest sins is pride. The Pharisee told the blind man, you were completely born in sin, and you are teaching us 
and they cast him out. Sin and pride, the biggest sources of blindness. If I were to ask you to take your hand and to cover your eyes, you would not be able, and I'm a shaif, like, I can't see you. Why? Because I have something covering my eyes. My vision is obstructed. I have the ability to see, but because something is in front of my eyes, I am not, I am not seeing. And the good news for us is that everyone has a spiritual eye. That's why in the book of Revelation, the creatures that like are on the, like are surrounding the throne of God, they all are full of eyes because God has given us the spiritual eye to see him, to know him. But we don't see him, why? Because we have things obstructing our vision. And that's why I believe the Lord Jesus Christ did something very interesting with this blind man. He told him to put He told him to put mud on his eyes, to obstruct his eyes. And this mud is a symbol of sin. When we have sin on our eyes, we cannot see clearly. It distorts our perception. It distort, distorts our reality. And then he told the blind man to go and wash when the mud went into the water, what happened to the mud? The mud went away. When we repent, the mud goes away and then we can, then we can see. Remove the obstruction from your eye and then you will be able to, to see. And actually this idea of putting on and putting off actually was the whole reading of the Pauline epistle today. If you focused on the Pauline epistle today, the Pauline epistle said, put, like every, the number of times it said, put on, put off, put on, put off. Just like this blind man was asked to put on and to put off. St. Paul says, to put to death your members which are of the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetous, idolatry. This was all in the Pauline epistle. You have to put off these things, otherwise you would not be able to, to see. He says you have to put off anger. Put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another. All of this was in Colossians today. He says, since you have put off the old man with his deeds. Then he says, you need to put on. He says, put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him. And then he says it again. Therefore, as elect of God, holy and beloved, put on... Put on. What are you going to put on? He says, put on tender mercies. Put on kindness. Put on humility. Put on meekness. Put on long-suffering. Bearing with one another. Forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. That's what you should put on today. Today, we don't want to be blind anymore. We don't want to be blind anymore. We don't want to follow tradition just for the sake of doing good tradition. The tradition has meaning. Go into the depth and find the depth of the tradition. Don't conform to society. Society wants to blind us. Christians are supposed to stand out and remove the sin that blinds our eyes. Wash them in the waters. Wash them by repentance. Wash them by the tears. And then we will be able to see. And glory be to God forever. Amen.